you'll notice that first of all, you have a look at the ID or the outlook of the S series. It's uh, you know, HP's been quite good at selling to consumer-related products throughout Presario and our Pavilion brands. Um, but we do acknowledge that quite a few SMB or small business buyers do buy sort of prosumer-based notebooks through the various retail channels. And this is the ProBook uh, S-Series is really kind of aimed at that sort of a uh, person. So that's why the ID has gone through a little bit of a... Um, a uh, little bit of a, a working over, and you know, not an extreme makeover, but a little bit of a makeover uh, in terms of its finishing, as well as uh, things like we've added a, a, a new keyboard to our range of products. This is some people in the industry like to call it a chiclet keyboard. Yeah, chiclet keyboard. Um, you, you've seen it on other other um, uh, products, I'm sure, but. There are some distinct advantages with this type of keyboard. First of all, um, traditional keyboards which are sunk into uh, keyboard decks have air gaps around them and stuff like that. And actually, if you look at a keyboard over a few years and stuff like that, um, all your skin on your fingers, which is exfoliated, all the stuff that's in your fingers when you go to type on the keyboard, tends to get stuck in the grooves. With a chiclet-based keyboard, because the keys are raised and separated, um, clearing or clearing away of such dust and stuff like that can either be done with compressed air or even just a rag, you can just rub it off. So try and get some reliability. The S-Series also has the 3D drive guard, which we had in our corporate range of products, um, as well as it has the full 95,000 hours of testing that we have on our business with the book range. Now, a couple other sort of like business features to add to the prosumer, um, we're all, all slaves to email and contacts and task lists and stuff like that. And the predominant one that's available, application available in the market today is Office, Microsoft Office, 2003, 2007. Now, I'll, I'll paint you a picture. Um, say, for example, you're, uh, you've just, you're about to get on a plane, maybe Singapore Airlines. They've given you the 15-minute warning and they've told you that you better get on the plane because we're going to shut the door 10 minutes before departure and you'll miss your flight. You get a phone call from your boss and your boss has told you, hey, can you uh, just tell me where this uh, next meeting is and get some information? And of course, you uh, don't have it anywhere on you. You look at your notebook and you say, now, if I switch this notebook on, it's going to take how long to boot? Uh, Vista or XP Pro? If it's a completely clean vanilla build, probably take you about four or five minutes, maybe. If it's a full build with COE load or IT load and stuff like that, you could be waiting there for about eight or nine minutes. You're going to miss your flight, and you, or you're going to upset your boss. Which one do you choose? Always a tough one. Okay. So we've uh, had a good look into the situation and realised that um, maybe there's a better way of doing things. Okay. We are harnessing two things that HP have put into the product. The first one is a small applet, and this applet sits within your office uh, uh, build. And what it does, I'll just check into preferences, is that it takes a snapshot of your inbox, your task, your calendar, and your contacts, and stores it on a special part of your hard drive. Okay. And you can actually set how, many, how, long, how often it, it synchronizes. You can even set to do it manually. You can choose which one you want to do, whether it's calendar, contacts, inbox, task list. You can even select what information you want to have synchronized into this special file. You can even set a level of security, uh, which I have, which is a little bit of a PIN number, just in case someone you know, gets your machine and decides to access your special information. So you've synchronized it to a special part of your hard drive, and that's the first part of this uh, solution. The second part, is I'll just shut this machine down. And this again to demonstrate the operating system. This will take about a minute and a bit to settle down as, uh, as, a, as operating systems normally do. Mm -hmm. But um, what I'm about to show you now harnesses a second part of uh, what HP puts into its notebooks. HP is one of the few vendors in the industry today that writes its own BIOS. We don't get BIOSes from companies like Phoenix or Megatrends or whatever and some of that. We write, we, we write our own BIOSes. And because of that, we're able to do a few extra things in terms of features and designs that you know you might not be able to get out of traditional BIOS. Vendors. So we think in Outlook or certain things you can uh, you can you, you select your inbox, whatever your current inbox is, your calendar, your contacts and your task list. Okay? Um, and you can pick the fields on which one you want to use.
Okay, the machine's off. Now again, putting yourselves in the situation, you're about to miss your flight, you've only got five minutes, the machine's going to boot up. If I had to boot up this machine, I'd miss my flight. Or alternatively, I could use the quick look solution by just touching this button here. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Within 10 seconds, you've got your calendar information. You can click on what that calendar invite was. You can actually look down through the calendar information, find out what the dial-in number is if you need to. You can have a look at your task list, see exactly what tasks are required and stuff like that. You could even look at your contact list very quickly, uh, see what phone number you need to do, make a quick call. It's all listed on the right side. And one of the nicer features which I like is you can actually check what's in your inbox. And not only just the text of what's in your inbox, but you can even see pictures. So if someone sent you a picture or an EDM or something like that, you can actually see what that is. Well, you've got your information, a few seconds to go, two minutes before they close the door, you just simply go up here to the top, close it, your machine's down, it's switched off. Wow. You won't have any issues with the thing. So just a, a nice little feature that we've put in. This has actually come over a few generations. We had a quick look one, which... I, know, I've had it with my HP Tele PC that was like... Yes. TC1000. TC1000, <laughs> yes. We had, a, we had a quick look on that one as well. Uh, we've had a quick look 1.0, which took about a minute and a half to build, built on Vista. This one's independent of operating system because oh. it's actually using our BIOS, which is kind of like a, um, an operating system within an operating system, okay? And, and just, to, just to show you... Um, because I'm very proud of this, is the BIOS now even looks different from anything which is available on the market today. So just to come back to quick look, right? Um, yeah. Are you able to make changes to the information? Wow. Okay. Wow, I must see that. <laughs> Sorry, so I just got yeah, so it's, it's, by it's, that. it's different. Okay, it's different. It's not your normal text, you know, drop down the menus and stuff like that. That is amazing. Even to the point that. Okay, it's typing his password. We just filmed you having fun. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> There's not a lot of information here for you to see. So this is the BIOS. It is actually a graphic user interface of the BIOS now. With a mouse? Can, yeah, with a mouse <laughs> and stuff like that. It is, it is an OS within itself. And, you know, you can do your diagnostics. But anyway, you've got your boot options. Everything is, is, is very graphically driven, okay? 